Hello and welcome to this session of the 2021 FME World Fair. In this session, we'll talk how Idaho Transportation Department leveraged FME and FME Server to help improve performance and conversion of their text-based log files from their Snowplow program. So let's get started. I am Mark McCart. I work for Esri inside the Professional Services Division inside the Transportation Practice. Most of my activities revolve around data governance, data quality, and complex data engineering and data ETL processes, not only for the transportation industry, but other industries as well. Due to mountains and lack of cell coverage throughout Idaho, ITD currently does not have a real-time AVL solution for their snowplows. Instead, they rely on text-based log files being uploaded from the truck when a truck returns to the yard after a shift. Several years ago, ITD developed a custom application to take that data and turn them into time cards. However, over the past few years, they've seen a need for improvements. They reached out to Esri, and this is what we came up with. Here's a list of things I'll be covering today during this session. Please keep in mind that this will be a high-level discussion of the solution as a whole. We'll try to stay out of the weeds and save that for the Q&A session afterwards. As I had mentioned earlier, we were brought in to replace an existing application ITD developed several years ago. One of the main purposes of this migration, this improvement, was to incorporate a new linear referencing system in LRS. Uh, as they are retiring one system and moving over to a new one. Another reason we were brought in was to address one of their major issues identified during their review of their current application. The way the current application was designed, they had multiple threads trying to write to one table, right? So they were having schema locks and trying to talk over each other, and they wanted to address that issue. Obviously, they wanted to improve performance. They have this 15-minute turnaround time from when a truck comes back to the garage to when an operator can sit in front of a screen and sign off on their activities for that shift. They wanted to incorporate some new business logic as well, some new business rules. And then finally, just kind of the cherry on top was to improve that schema and make it a little more robust and accessible so other applications and other data components can be added to it to develop some metrics and some analysis of their snowplow information. So at a high level we have to take this text-based log file here on the left and turn that into a time card that an operator can understand and approve and incorporate behind the scenes into their time card and asset management solution all the while being able to take that same data and put it on a map and do some analysis and metrics and then finally, roll all that data up into season-wide tallies and totals so ITD can review their entire snow operations program as a whole. We do this data derivation starting with the log file here that we showed earlier. And then if we deep dive that log file a little bit and we look at the rows, we start to see a pattern and we start to see rows repeating. And that rows uh, starts with a letter and the letter G, F, V, whatever. Each of those lettered rows means something. And so we're going to focus on rows G to G because that equates to a single ping, a single latitude and longitude that we can put on a map. Now keep in mind that each of these rows between the G and G lines means something. Each row has its own set of schema, its own unique number of fields, and each of these codes means something. And to top that off, there could be maybe five rows between G to G. There could be 14 rows G to G. And so FME really came in handy here to get that solved. So we just send it through the roller coaster, a couple loop-de-loops, and then we flatten that data out. So now each ping is on its own row, and that uh, row equals uh, each ping along a route as that snowplow traveled. Now we can take that data and do some really fun stuff with it, but the main goal of Wars 2.0 was to create a time card. So in order to do that, we have to keep sending that data on down through FME. We have to query the Agile Assets um, management system called TAMS to get uh, admin information, stockpile information, uh, snowplow equipment information, and append all of that to it. Send all of that to the JSON template to create this JSON message that you see here. 
Now that JSON message actually gets bundled up and sent via an HTTP caller uh, out to the war server, and that's where another application behind the scenes creates this time card interface. Keep in mind where FME stops is really that JSON message. Once it's sent uh, and recorded, um, the time card interface is a whole other application, so I won't get into that here. And this is the solution I came up with. An FME server with six engines. Engines one through five are dedicated more for taking that log file and deriving out a JSON message and flattening it out. Engine six is really for that automation that actually listens for changes to that directory when new log files come in. And then there's some miscellaneous weekly stuff we run behind the scenes. Now, to address that main issue that they had with multiple threads writing to a same table and causing schema locks and so forth, I decided to separate all the tables out, all the engines out into their own swim lane. So engine one has their own workspaces, their own folder structure, and their own tables. And then that same for engine two, three, four, and five. And so far that's been working pretty well. However, as you can imagine, if we take the three workspaces that are needed to derive this log file and multiply that times five, we end up with a whole bunch of workspaces. And with all the support uh, workspaces and everything else behind the scenes, the whole solution is 23 workspaces in two FME server automations. So let's just look a little bit closer here and see what that is. So as I mentioned earlier, when a truck returns back to the yard, that file gets uploaded and that's done via, via the vendor's application called Data Smart. It takes that data from the controller, compiles it and puts it into a log file and dumps it into a directory where FME server can listen for it. Once those new log files are dropped into that folder structure, the first of three workspaces kick off. In this first workspace, uh, we listen, uh, we take all the files that were dropped in during that one minute uh, polling interval. We sort them from oldest to newest, right? And then we also extract out key information such as uh, log file name, truck number, uh, date, etc. And then we randomly assign them to one of five engines. And then we also finally take those log files and move physically move the file into those specific engine number folders to kind of queue them up for the next uh, piece of the automation. Once a log file gets dropped into an engine specific folder, the next workspace that runs is a critical check workspace. It checks to make sure that there's a latitude and a longitude, the power up sequence has occurred correctly, and whether the time zone exists or not. To add to complexity, if you weren't aware, Idaho has two time zones, Pacific and Mountain, and that added a whole other layer of complexity, especially dealing with UTC and local time zones. Once those critical checks are done, we do record them. We email the appropriate ITD personnel to let them know, hey, there was an issue with the log file. Um, we attempt to run most of them a second time just to make sure, and this was something that Wars 1.0 couldn't do. The only type of log file we can't run a second time is if they're missing the G records, because without a latitude and longitude in that G record, we can't snap to a route, so there's no point in trying to run that. So after the critical check, the final workspace to run is really where everything happens. This is where we start to flatten out those lettered rows into a single record, and then we also create a point geometry, right, and then we snap that to a pseudo routable network that we built inside uh, roads and highways as an event layer and basically we accounted for overpasses and intersections and so forth. Once we have all of that information we can create an activity code and that's based on plow up plow down material applied and then also how fast the truck is going. And once we have all that good rich information, that's considered a raw AVL ping, and we write that out to the pings table. We don't put any geometry to it just to speed up that writer inside the workbench and to keep our processing time down. And that's all well and good, but we still have to create this time card. So we keep sending that data on down the line. We have to query the Agile Assets TAM solution behind the scenes to get some admin information and stockpile information as mentioned earlier and then we send all of that great information to the JSON templater 
We generate that JSON template, or template that I showed earlier, and then we send that off to the war server. And then we record the, the JSON message we sent, when we send it, and whether the war server accepted it. And that's it. That's how we take that log file and get it flattened out, create the time card and everything. But going back to this ping table with all that great data, what should we do with it? What ride should we take next? Under a different project that Esri is supporting ITD with, the, one of their first applications they wanted to, to be built was a way to automate this existing Excel-based analytics, this mobility cost efficiency algorithm, the MCE. For the longest time, a gentleman there at ITD, Dennis Jensen, had been manually computing these MCE scores for storm events for years inside of Excel, and it was pretty painstaking, and it took had to go multi query multiple reports and gather that and then plug that into an Excel file. And it was something that we wanted to automate. Now keep in mind these this MCE score is not only based on snowplow information, but it's also based on real-time RWIS information, that roadway weather information sensor, right, that RWIS site. So we get real-time temperature, precip, is there material on the road as far as snow, ice, or water, what's the grip percentage as far as traction, and then we also take that and do number of laps, and there's the criteria as well. And then we have to plug it into this Excel spreadsheet. Now keep in mind, I kept it blurry because this algorithm is pretty impressive and I didn't want to give anyway any trade secrets, right? Um, but just keep in mind, we have to plug in all of this stuff. Some are manual entries, some are based on equations. Uh, and you can see we really needed to automate this behind the scenes. So you plug in all of that information, you get a score for a storm event and it determines whether the plow operators uh, efficiently cleared the road and kept the road uh, clear and dry during a storm event or not, and how much material and cost and labor and so forth. Uh, pretty impressive algorithm, algorithm that they came up with, and it took a little bit behind the scenes to get this thing rolled into FME and to automate it. Ended up having to require five workspaces, one to pull the RWIS live information from their XML feed, then we had to actually determine whether an MCE event was occurring, and so there's some criteria and business rules there. And then once the event started, then we had to go query the ping table, the AVL table, right? And then once that was done, we had to write it out to historic events, because that's how we're going to roll that up uh, in our seasonal totals. And then to top that off, we needed some way to query the raw data being derived from wars. 2.0, this new FME solution, uh, and then figure out whether or not the math all adds up between the two. And then throw that on top of two FME server automations and one server app, and that's what was behind the scenes for this. And ultimately, you come up with this. For the first time ever, we were able to put that Excel data on a map. We're looking at the last three events, and as New events roll on, uh, FME just kind of rolls these events off uh, the map. We look at MCE scores, we look at um, efficiency, we look at material type, whether or not an invalid stockpile ID was used, etc. And what's coming up next is, and I say under construction, it's basically done. We just got a late start uh, to the season when we rolled this stuff out, so this will really become official next winter. Uh, we take all that seasonal data and roll that up into metrics and analysis that can be seen at a leadership level. Keep in mind, for years, that Excel file really didn't have much exposure at the executive level. So hopefully this will open up some eyes to how well or how poorly or where some improvements can be d made for putting down material and time and hours and plows and so forth. So in closing, just keep in mind FME can take away those data processing fears that you might have. Just hop on, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. I want to thank you guys for listening to my presentation, and we'll turn it over for questions and answers. Thanks.